everyone. Thank you for joining us on CBS 8 Plus. I'm Kirsten Holmes. Here at CBS 8, we are working for you. Get to the bottom of problems you've asked about, and we are looking for solutions. For some people who have been forking out big money for SDG&E bills, big changes could be on the way. For others, not so much. CBS 8's Shannon Handy is working for you on this story. She spent time digging for answers from SDG&E, and she breaks down how much less or how much more you would pay if a new proposal goes through. This change wouldn't go into effect for at least another year or more. Essentially, people would be billed based on their income. So while a lot of customers will wind up saving money, others could pay more. The state legislature passed a law last year that uh, requires a real fundamental change in how electricity is priced in the state of California. That law, says Scott Kreider, stg &E's Vice President of External Affairs and Operations Support, requires California utility companies come up with a fixed rate plan as a way to help stabilize rates and make billing more equitable. Kreider sat down with me to talk about stg &E's joint proposal with pg &E and SoCal Edison, saying it differs greatly from how customers are bill now. Currently, you not only pay for how much electricity your household uses, but other things such as how that electricity is delivered. Both prices vary month to month. stg and &E's plan is to offer residential customers a fixed delivery rate every month, no matter how much electricity is used. By having a fixed price for the delivery portion of it, uh, we can actually reduce the remaining electricity rate by about 42 percent. So what could that look like under the current billing system at 47 cents per kilowatt hour? The average customer pays $188 per month. Under the fixed rate proposal, they pay $181. Here's a breakdown of where you'd fall based on your income. Households making less than $28,000 a year would pay a fixed delivery rate of $24 per month. Under $69,000, that fixed price goes up to $34. Between $69,000 and $180,000, $73. Households making over $180,000 will pay $128 a month. Everyone's average kilowatt hour rate drops from 47 cents to 27 cents. This proposal is income based, but some people feel uncomfortable about giving away their financial information. What's your response to that? I, we would agree. We don't want customers' financial information. Our perspective is the state it will be uh, very, uh, very capable to be able to do this. and really be able to send us uh, the data that's needed. Kreider tells me stg &E would not make more profit under this plan, but I wanted to know with so many customers potentially saving money, how would stg &E maintain its record numbers? To make stg &E's profits stay consistent, if you have higher income customers pay more, it makes up for the savings from the lower and middle income customers. Yeah, that's correct. Another thing to consider, this would impact every residential customer, including those with solar. So even solar customers now who don't pay any delivery charge, they will be included in this proposal. That's correct. Fixed rates are already the norm for water and sewage. As for electricity, Kreider says these changes are the result of California's climate goals, saying with more and more people transitioning to cleaner energy, such as electric vehicles, we have to find a way to make it affordable. We've heard loud and clear from our customers that, um, you know, they're struggling and they need action taken. He admits while this proposal could offer short-term relief, what happens in the long run is unclear. It's hard to speculate where rates will go. We know that more infrastructure is going to be needed. This is not going to be an issue that's completely addressed with one proposal. The California Public Utilities Commission has until July 1st of next year to adopt a proposal and decide when it takes effect. This will impact Community Choice Energy customers as well. Working for you, I'm Shanna Handy for CBS 8. Thank you for that, Shannon. Okay, so a local teacher says thousands of dollars worth of his students' science equipment is now missing. We're talking equipment for technology, engineering, arts, and math. It was all inside his car when it got stolen while he was grocery shopping. CBS 8's Ariana Cohen is working for you on this story. She met with that teacher and she called police to see if there are any leads on this case. I met with Alex here at the Flower Hill Promenade parking lot due to safety concerns, but I want to be clear, the theft did not happen here. He tells me thousands of dollars worth of equipment was stolen at a Vons parking lot in El Cerrito. Alex Ferre is a teacher at Snapology in Solana Beach, a company that provides science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, or STEAM learning through Lego robotics and engineering kits. About a month ago, he 
he was grocery shopping when he says something unexpected happened next. When I came back to the parking lot, my car was gone and um, I knew it was a risk that something could have been taken, but I didn't realize that the whole car could have been taken and that, that was me not thinking forward. He tells me he thinks his car keys were pickpocketed from him. I believe my keys were stolen from my, I had a, a uh, I had a jacket on with big pockets and I believe they just were able to steal it and pickpocket it from me. Inside the Kia Soul, Alex says he had $10,000 worth of steam equipment, including Lego robotics kits, Amazon tablets used for robotics and a competition board, among other items. In my heart of hearts, what I care most about is my students and their learning and having the equipment that was taken from me is really the justice I want. I, I, I don't seek anything further. He says he filed a police report, but so far he hasn't had any luck. I called and emailed the detective on the case and I'm waiting to hear back. He's hoping to raise $10,000 to replace the equipment for his students. It's been a deep learning moment. As a teacher and as a member of the community and someone who really believes in what I'm doing, asking for help and recognizing that we're, we are going to do what we need to do for our students. Working for you, Ariana Cohen, CBS 8. Neighbors in Mission Beach are hoping to get a problem fix that they say has gone on for far too long. They tell us that city lights on the boardwalk have been out for years. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to shed some new light on this situation. I just got done talking with the woman who reached out to us and her neighbors, and they say many of the lights here along the boardwalk are out, and at night it can get pretty dark around here. See this light right here? Terry Young's showed me this light above the Mission Beach boardwalk. She and her neighbors say it's been out for a long time. This problem has been going on for at least six years. That for them, they can't understand why it's taking so long to fix. It's really unacceptable. It's ridiculous. It's very frustrating. They've submitted a bunch of get it done reports over the years with no luck. So here's the street light maintenance from six years ago. Uh, it says that it's closed. The problem with the get it done app is nothing ever gets done. And this light here at the end of Windermere Court isn't the only light not working along the boardwalk. There's at least 20 lights from Crystal Pier down to a couple blocks south of us that are out. Mayor Todd Gloria told CBS 8 Monday that three and a half million dollars in federal funding is now being put to use as they work to catch up on the backlog of 6,000 streetlights across the city. This funding will help us replace this outdated wiring that makes these lights so unreliable and so difficult to repair, including the, a redundant circuit so that if anything happens on one circuit, the lights can still operate on the second one while the first one gets repaired. And they're also contracting with outside electricians beyond their own city staff to help address the backlog. These folks will get to work immediately delivering repairs uh, at hundreds of locations across the entire city. I reached out to the city's transportation department, which oversees these street lights, and they say electrical staff should be able to fix this particular light by the end of the month, while hopefully fixing others in the area as well. But for now, with the lights out, neighbors around here don't feel safe at night. We need lights. There's a lot of questionable activity that goes on in the boardwalk. It's lovely to walk at, on the boardwalk at nighttime, but not anymore because it's all dark. It's ridiculous. Working for you in Mission Beach, Brian White, CBS 8. Well, they don't wash ashore often, but when they do, they are hard to miss, so you might have seen them. They're blue jellyfish-like blobs, and they have been spotted all across our local beaches. CBS 8's Abby Black is working for you to find out what they are, where they come from, and if they can hurt you. If you've been to the beach lately, you might notice some blue-looking blobs like this. We're working for you to find out what are these fascinating creatures that sail on the ocean surface. Camouflage and the colorful rocks at Torrey Pine State Beach, you'll spot some unusual blue jelly-like creatures wedged in the sand. Right, they just blend in with the rocks really well. As Angelo Scolari was digging for rocks to throw, he couldn't help but notice the blue sails. Two of them here, another big guy up here. They look like jellyfish, but when we went to Scripps Institute of Oceanography, we learned they're part of the hydrozonas group. So these things that we're seeing washing up on our shores are called Valella Valella. And even though they look like jellyfish, they're actually not. So they're more closely related to an animal called the Portuguese man of war. 
PhD student Anya Steiner studying biology oceanography and says during her undergrad she studied the Valleas Valleas that earned the nickname by the wind sailors after their sail-like shape. Which couldn't be more accurate because these guys really can't move themselves around in the water. They are totally at the mercy of their little sails, which is why they can sometimes wash ashore. Steiner says that they are a cosmopolitan species, meaning they float across the world, but it often takes a combination of shortboard winds and plentiful food to see them wash ashore. So they'll eat lots of little zooplankton, kind of like pictures that you can see here. We dug through our archives and found them saturated across our beaches in 2015 and 2016. Although they do have stingers like a jellyfish, do they sting if you touch them? And I would recommend against touching anything that you don't really know what it is, but Valella Valellas particularly don't have any toxins in them that would hurt a human, as far as we know. Okay, if you're a larval fish though, then beware because the Valella Valellas will get you. <laughs> As we walked along the Torrey Pine State Beach, we found the Vallejo Vallejas, but they've also been recently spotted all along the Southern California coast. You just have to take a closer look and you'll find them. Yeah, they're a really important part of our ecosystem and it's really exciting to see them because they are sort of what I would consider rare. Working for you, I'm Abby Black, CBS 8. Thank you for that, Abby. Okay, so remember, we are working for you. If there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.